Good morning. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Welcome. Welcome to church this morning. It is good to see everybody today. Welcome. Welcome again. Just a reminder that uh, if we could all just say hello in our chat box, um, and if there's a and put in the number of people who are kind of attending with you on in your space that helps us to keep attendance and uh, another reminder that we are that, that this is being recorded um, and that uh, you know there's there's always the possibility of the zoom bombing though um, zoom really is working on trying to make that less of a possibility so um, uh, anyway, if if that were to happen, if something inappropriate appears on the screen, just close your eyes. I'll do what we need to do to kick whoever it is off, and I'll let you know when to open them, and we'll continue on. So, welcome. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was, in the beginning, with God. All things were made through him. Without him was not one thing made that was made. What was made in him was life. And the life was the light to all people. The light shines in the darkness. Darkness cannot overcome it. Will you join with me in the call to worship? Who is like you, O Lord, majestic in holiness and awesome in splendor? We will sing to the Lord, for God has triumphed gloriously. God is our strength, our might, and our salvation. And let us sing together our opening hymn, Give Thanks. join together in prayer. So we do know of some people who are in need of prayer. I am going to share those prayers, conclude each one with Lord in your mercy, and we can all respond here our prayer. And then it will be your turn. So if you have a prayer, please say it from where you're at. Well, unmute yourself. Say it from where you're at. I'll put it in the form of a prayer, conclude it with Lord in your mercy, and we'll all respond here our prayers. So let's pray. For uh, for Jane Yukoi, for her health. Um, hopefully she has remained uh, symptom free from the coronavirus that uh, she tested positive for um, and that she will get to have the uh, heart valve replacement that she needs again uh, and that that surgery might go well. Lord in your mercy, hear our prayers. For everybody in the paths uh, and recovering from all of the natural disasters that we are experiencing in the country and around the world, for hurricanes both by the coast and inland, for uh, wildfires that are out of control on the west coast, um, for 
everybody who's been impacted by anything like that or any other natural disasters here or around the world for recovery, for strength, for peace, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Black Lives Matter, for um, everybody who is struggling to have uh, equity in treatment and equity of opportunity in our country and around the world, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Zach Foreman, for everybody in his unit, uh, for Nathan, the brother of um, my, uh, we'll, we'll call it my son-in-law, um, and uh, for all of our armed service members deployed around the world, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For uh, Mary Ann Linda Watson's mom, who as she continues to recover from her broken hip, sounds like she's recovering well, may it continue, Lord, in your mercy hear our prayers. Uh, for Dorothy and Don Meggers, for their health, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Lois Esther, for her health, um, having some pain in her legs and other issues. So for uh, Lois, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. What are your prayers today? Tom, I have one. Yes, April. Um, uh, I have prayers for a young woman I know named Danielle that has um, breast cancer. And she has to go through chemo, et cetera. And she's like 32. Okay, so for Danielle, for uh, her fight with breast cancer, um, for strength for the treatment, and may it be successful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For Carla and your family, Carla, and for all of us as we continue to mourn the loss of Lou, and for Helen Singson's family and everybody who is missing Helen, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Well, for all these and all those that we keep in our hearts, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Let's pray. Loving God, I thank you for your many and precious promises. Forgive me for the times when I take my eyes off you and slip into unbelief. And help me to keep my eyes fixed on Christ and the truth of your word. Help me to rest in you and trust all the issues of my life into your hands. All this we pray in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, Mary Jane, do you have our story today? Yes, I do. Our story today comes from Matthew 19, 16 through 22. Just then a man came to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? Why do you ask me about what is good, Jesus replied. There is only one who is good. If you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Which ones, he inquired. Jesus replied, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as yourself. All these I have kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, go, sell your possessions and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sad because he had great wealth. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we ask that you be in the speaking and the hearing of your word. 
Amen. So um, I'm guessing that most of us know by now that I am a huge fan of Stephen Covey. Um, aside from the Bible, he his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, is one of two that I tend to, that I have read over and over and over again because uh, they are um, so good. The, the other one actually is Dale Carnegie's uh, How to Win Friends and, and Influence People. Um, but the uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People really is, uh, is just good, good habits. And the third habit of highly effective people is to live with the end in mind. Um, which, which, you know, Stephen uh, lays out that all of us, you know, all of us really do have to look forward to the day when we will be on our deathbed and we are looking back on our lives. Um, and, and to really live life with that eventuality in mind because it really helps to put things in perspective. It, it helps us to ask really deep, really important questions like if when, when we're on our deathbed, we, we ask things like, you know, what's the meaning of life? What is our legacy? How will we be remembered? And, and what impact will our lives have on life? And what will impact will our lives have after we're gone? So, so I invite you to, to just put yourself in that place at this time for a moment and think about that. Think about what, what it is to be in that moment where all that we have to look back to look at is our life that has come before us because we don't know really what is to come after death fully and completely so so in that space as you're thinking about that on your deathbed do you think that you will wish that you had spent more hours in the office working Anybody? Or, or at, that, at that moment, do you think that you, will, that you will reflect back on what kind of cars you drove? Or, or how big or how impressive your house was? I don't, I don't think that those are the things that I will be thinking about or, or pondering at that moment in time. And yet, and yet, we are bombarded by messages every minute of our lives to think about, ooh, how successful am I going to be? How, or, do I wear nice clothes? Do I, what kind of car am I driving? Is it, is it the most comfortable? Is it the most prestigious? How, how big is my house? Do I have the coolest lawnmower tractor? Right? We are bombarded by messages every minute of our lives to buy more and more stuff. Because if I only had the right car and the right clothes and the right house, then I would be happy is, is the message that we receive all the time. Amen? You, do you know what I'm talking about? And, and so it is that in our story today, we meet a rich young man who has all the stuff that you could ever want. And he comes to Jesus asking a burning question that remains for him. That I'm guessing is a burning question, well, certainly that we will be asking in that moment when we are on our deathbed. 
what do I have to do to enter eternal life? What is it? What is it that I need to do? What good thing can I do? What good thing could I have done to enter eternal life? And Jesus says, all that stuff that you've got, sell it. Give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. And then follow me. What do you what do you think that that's about that, that Jesus is suggesting here? What is this eternal life that the young man is is asking about and that and that Jesus is talking about? A life that does not end but but keeps on going and going and going. Well, certainly at least part of that is is talking about legacy, isn't it? It is, it is talking about the things that we will be remembered for. So how many of us do you think will be remembered for all of the stuff that we have accumulated? Thank, thank God I have so much stuff that I can give to my kids so that they can have a great estate sale. Right? Because... The vast majority of our stuff that we give to our kids is then sold at an estate sale. Amen? No. No, what continues of our lives forever and ever is what our lives have meant. It's, it's the differences that we have made to other people. It's the examples that we have set for our kids and our family. It's the words and the values that we pass on. It's the ways that we have helped life to thrive around us. That, that, that is a positive legacy that, that goes on and on and on. Of course, the question is, how much have we invested in a legacy like that? Because sometimes... If all that we invest in is more and more stuff, then our legacy can actually be exactly the opposite. The, the things that we are remembered for are not for the things that we stood for, for the values that we had, for the ways that we have improved life around us. I, I, do, I do a lot of funerals. And I get to hear lots and lots of stories about lots and lots of people's lives. And, and I'm really, really, really good at listening to those stories and reflecting them back during the funeral. And, and, if, and if I don't know the person, then those stories really are all I've got. And sometimes... The, the stories that, that the family has are not much. Matter of fact, I can think of a few cases where all that a family has ever said is he was a good provider. And that, and that is a really, really tough um, place for me to reflect back on the meaning and legacy of somebody else's life. The invitation that Jesus makes to us and that Jesus makes to the young rich man is to invest our lives literally, literally in God's purpose that we would invest ourselves, body, mind, soul, dollars, all that we've got in God's heaven-making purposes now. That, that, that we would do everything that we've got with all that we have in order to encourage life to thrive around us. So that, so that people around us might, might live better. So that, so that the ground around us literally might thrive. And when we do that, 
when we do that, we build a legacy that is amazing, that people look back on, that goes on and on forever. That is certainly at least part of what Jesus and the young rich man are talking about when they are talking about eternal life. So we're beginning our stewardship campaign now. It is, it is that time of year. If you haven't received your letter in the mail yet, you will be receiving it soon. And as we enter into that season every year, so this is, this is kind of like a New Year's resolution at church. Every year we get the chance to reflect back on how is it that I have invested myself in God's kingdom building purposes in the past year. And so as we look at that and we look toward the year to come, I invite you to think about and to ponder what is it that you want your legacy to be and how will you invest you in God's purposes in the coming year in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so it is that that offering really is the core. It really is at the heart of everything that we do in worship and as a church because because what are we about if, if we are about nothing else as a church? We are about investing in God's heaven-making purposes here on earth now. And so I invite you also to take some time to give your offering today, whether that is um, sending it in by snail mail dropping it off at one of our live worship services on Sunday morning at nine or Wednesday night at six. Um, but please take the time to offer your tithes of thanksgiving and praise. Let us, let us sing together our closing hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be.
So just one announcement, uh, the uh, Tuesday night yoga will resume this week at seven o'clock in the prayer garden. So Bobby is back and will be uh, helping to lead that small group again. Um, and anybody who wants to do yoga is invited to come. Um, is there, are there any other announcements that I am missing? All right. All right, well, may God bless you and keep you. May God lift God's countenance upon you. May God fill you with God's vision for what life could be. And may you be so captivated by that vision that you desire to invest all that you have got in God's purposes, that you might go connect with and care for God and life. Amen. Go in peace.